Eric, say hi. Hello, everybody. Okay. What this is, is we build a lot of diesel motors, and so we go through uh, cores. Uh, a lot of times, diesel heads are beyond repair. Yep. They've been resurfaced too many times. The deck thickness is too thin. And what I mean by that is, when you take metal off of a, of a, of a deck of a head, there is a minimum thickness, and that minimum thickness is basically that. That's what I'm talking about. And a manufacturer will give you the minimum thickness on that head. But just so you know, what they're really concerned about, give me a set of slide calipers. The thickness that we're worried about is not so much this much meat, but it's this meat here in the water jacket. And if you'll look in here, in this water jacket, it's the bottom of that to there. That is the actual deck thickness that you need to be worried about. So what we've got here, is an aftermarket casting and an original casting. 6.4 power stroke. But what I want to do is I want to check on this head and see if this aftermarket casting, brand new, is as thick in this, in this area as it is on this one. 17.64. Actually, that casting, so I like that. We're way. So this casting here, look in here, look in here, you can just see it. So what I'm talking about here is the thickness of the deck between the deck here and down here. When that gets too thin, that's what causes this to warp. And you'll look here, this is a factory, see all that? And you go over here, you can all, your eyeballs will tell you it's thicker. See what I'm talking about? Look how much metal is in there. So I really like, I like this casting, okay? We've tried another aftermarket casting and we, didn't, we weren't as happy with them. I'm not gonna throw out names here, but to show what you should be looking for when you're looking at a good casting. So now, we know that this casting has got a good thick deck. Yep. It's not some cheapy, uh, thin casting. We get these castings, brand new, and they're completely assembled. We call this a loaded casting, which means it's got the valves, the springs in here. They've set their uh, recession height, and what I mean by recession height is on a diesel, the valve has to actually be recessed into the head. There is a depth that we measure. And that depth uh, intake and exhaust is supposed to be, Eric? 13 thou to 27 thou. Let's just see, because this one we just popped out of the box. Yeah, 13 to 27 thou. So that, that's 28. A, that's a, go, go to that one. 30 to 30. See, that's too much. So there's a problem. We don't ever not disassemble ahead. So we've already disassembled this one. You've touched the seats up. Yep. Uh, Face the valves. Uh, guides were all good and everything. Guides were good. So on this head, actually recession was too uh, high. So the valve was actually too close to the deck surface. Which would increase our compression. Would Yep, would increase the compression. So I actually had to cut the valve seat down uh, about six thou on these heads to, to get to the recession uh, Correct. within spec. And I see we've already put these up in the uh, Rattler and we've uh, made our O-ring. Yep. So we'll O-ring the cylinder head. This is an upgrade that we do. And uh, what else do we do when we get these new heads? So we disassemble them. We, we, we fix the recession problems. Yep. Uh, resurface I, the decks. Are the, are the decks on that head? What's the ARA on that head? So it looks like these are like belt sanded uh -huh. almost. Oh, um, let's look at that. Lay that down flat. Oh yeah. Oh, this one actually was actually rotary. You can see the, the rotary wave here. You guys have seen this before. This is a profileometer, and if you'll watch here, this little stylus is going to move. And while that's drawing in, it's creating a picture here on the screen. And it'll give me an RA, and RA stands for roughness average. And this surface and the surface on the block, think of this as like a cheese sandwich. This is one piece of the bread, the block is another piece of bread, and the cheese head gasket. Those two pieces of bread and that cheese have to be the right texture or you won't get the ceiling and the, the durability out of your head gasket. That's a little rough, isn't 41, it? 41, which is rough. So which, this uses a multi-layer head gasket, which you want to be below 25. 25. So we will resurface. So there's another thing that these, these heads, as they come, are not acceptable. Um, what I'm trying to show you here is just because it comes out of the box does not mean it, it's ready for prime time uh, and certainly for our, for our product. Uh, and we've resurfaced this head? Yep, this let's, one has been resurfaced. So, so let's, let's, let's check the RA on this. And you'll notice on this head, you don't have the waves in it. So it should be quite a bit smoother. But we're not speculating, this is science, man. This is science. Drum roll, please. 
21. So our RA is 21. We want to be 15 to 25. We're, we're in money, man. Yep, yep perfect. we're in money. So, uh, so these heads, besides putting the wires in and getting them uh, reassembled, I like this casting. Yeah, so far so good. Yeah, I've never found, just so everybody's aware, I have never ever, I don't care if they're coming, you know, not even gas heads, diesel heads, whatever I'm buying from a manufacturer, loaded head or unloaded, the head's never right. When you guys out there are buying stuff to uh, build your stuff with, it ain't right. And I mean every man, every manufacturer. So uh, if you want it to be right, find a good machine shop, this is the kind of stuff you want them looking for to make it right. All right, today we got a 6.4 power stroke head. Um, we're gonna be O-ringing the head with the stainless steel wire. It's 41 thou thick. We cut a groove in the head that's 32 thou deep and the groove wide is 38 thou. So we got about a 3 thou press fit for the width and then the wire will stick up above the head about eight to nine thou. You want to make sure you have a nice even 90 degree surface on this wire i haven't cut this yet it's probably hard to see on camera um, but i'm going to file this down until it's flat because when you cut it with a cutter it will leave kind of like a peak so i'll file it down here Make sure you deburr the edge a little bit because when you file it flat, it'll leave a burr on the edge. So you just want to deburr the sides. Now we're going to take the wire, going to get a rough idea of how big this O ring is. Cut the wire. That's probably a little big, but it'll do. Your start and end point where a head bolt or head stud is because that's going to have the most clamping force. So I'm gonna start my wire right next to this head bolt. I'm gonna take my hammer, make sure it's nice and soft so you're not ruining the deck surface. And then before you get to the end here, you're gonna take your cutter. And you don't wanna to cut too short here. You always wanna leave it longer if possible. Cut it and then same thing, we're gonna file it flat just enough to where it slips down in there nice and tight. And then while you're filing that, there's gonna be shavings. So I'm just gonna take some compressed air, blow it down in there. And then take my hammer and knock it down in. And there we go. All right, so we're back. We're gonna go ahead. This is uh, our aftermarket head. Got our, our stainless steel O-rings in here. And we're gonna go ahead and assemble them now. And uh, then we'll vacuum check it. And then this head is ready. It was not ready when it came in the box, assembled from the manufacturer. I'm not here to be picky. I'm here to do it right. Valve stem seals in. It's also the lower spring seat. And it's all in one. So make sure you put some lube on there all over the valve guide and where the seat is. Stem seals all in. Again, valves need to lube them up. And then I have these marked. I mark them just because sometimes seat heights are different, stem heights are different, so I mark them. He marks them because he's good. He's accurate oh. and he's thorough. Is there a top and bottom to that spring? I'm looking. Now remember, top and a bottom, the bottom would always be your tighter coil. But this spring is this equal, so there is no top and bottom on that spring. So while we're having him do this, I'm gonna give you a little terminology. Spring, retainer, stem seal, and that's your spring pad, it's built into that one. And these are keepers. 
and obviously there is a top and a bottom. All right, so we got a keeper holder here. So we'll go to our valve, lower this, press this tool on there, and release. So we got all our valve springs in. I'm gonna take just a rubber mallet and lightly tap all the valves to make sure all the valve keepers are seated. And that just ensures that you won't drop a valve in your motor and you don't want that. So now we're gonna vacuum test this. This is our vacuum tester. So this is our gauge here. Right about there is almost like perfect vacuum. So if I stick this on my palm, that's a perfect seal. And if I stick it on the valve here or on the intake, I get basically the same exact result. And then I can check my leak down. I turn the vacuum pump off and there's no leak down. So I'm just gonna do that to every cylinder and check them all. All right, so we finally finished this 6.4 power stroke head with the O-rings. Again, this is a brand new casting. Um, again, check your new parts. Not every part is gonna be correct like this was. So check your recession, check your stem height, check your vacuum, um, and also check your deck surface because 80% of this head was not correct. So this head is good to go. We're gonna send it off to our customer.